Hi guys, this is going to be number two in the Between the Covers series, I think. But it also ties in with some of the other videos I've done recently about production lathes and turret lathes. Uh, this is an Alfred Herbert limited catalogue. Alfred Herbert Carpentry. Um, it's only come today, so I'm pretty pleased to get it, and it's interesting reading. Alfred Herbert Limited, Coventry, makers of capstan and turret lathes since 1889. This says it's the third edition, or the second edition, so I don't really know what year it is. I'm guessing it's 1950s. It says that they had overseas agents in India and Australia and South Africa and Canada and Argentina. Plus the branch offices at London, Glasgow, Manchester, Sheffield, Bristol, Birmingham, Newcastle and Tyne. They must have been a pretty big company. Made a lot of stuff. When you think about the, the sort of things that were made with, with capstan and turret lathes, and the, the quantities of things that were made, things like garden taps and steam fittings and nuts and bolts and washers and uh, garden hose fittings. Lots and lots and lots of things were made by, made with these lathes. So, they must have been a big company and just looking at this catalogue and it interests me a bit. This says the price is five shillings, which I guess is a lot of money because it is an expensive book. All these photographs here, it's glossy paper, a nice glossy paper and all these photos are retouched with an airbrush. I don't know if people know that about uh, about some of these old old catalogues. These are all photographs, but they've been retouched, and someone in the art department would have spent a lot of time retouching a picture like this. They would have been blown up to say eight by ten, and black and white photographs. And they were all masked up and and masked off, and then they were retouched with a with a little spray gun called an airbrush, which looks like this. This one's mine. This is a Parsh. It's um, sort of a an average sort of an airbrush. I don't think I'd ever be good enough to buy a decent one, but this is quite good for fine work. But that's what would have been used for. And back in the days before Photoshop. Most of these pictures in this catalogue were um, touched up by airbrush. It must have been hours and hours and hours in making a book like this. There's lots of little technical drawings as well. So I'm guessing there was a bit of work for a drawing office as well. And the art department, whether whether this work was, was actually farmed out but it doesn't say no one else has given any credit for this book so probably the, Alfred Herbert had had an in-house in art department that did this sort of work uh, it's just it's a colossal the, the amount of time and the amount of man hours that would have gone into this I think that my little experience with airbrushing is that that these photographs, they would have taken maybe by the time all your paint dried and you put them aside for a bit, it probably a couple of days each to do. And there's lots and lots and lots of them. I think these ink drawings that are part of the the book too. They, I think they would have taken. A couple of days each for a, for a, someone in the drawing office to finish. So it's such a huge job. We don't realise now in the day when merchandising for a shop is photographed and photoshopped 
and sent to the printers and hanging in the shop window Australia-wide inside probably 10 days or a week. For example, and everyone has a, a rough grasp of how to how to touch things up in Photoshop. It's it's kind of cool to remember that not that long ago, and this is probably the forties or the fifties, these these photographs in this book were all hand touched, and they were all done. And die heads and these pictures were all done with an airbrush and with a a adjustable nib and and in the ink and they're just stunning quality and they're really it's really a trade that that isn't out there anymore so anyway this book um It's more or less a catalogue, but it's it's also a a how we set the the machine up to do things book as well. It shows pretty much their entire product line and and what it was used for, and how to use it. Uh, there's a picture there of the uh, patent gear drawn in chuck and automatic bar feet. On a Herbert number no. four capstan lathe, which number no. four looks like a big machine, but it's got a weight to, I guess, to feed the bar as as each piece is made, and it's got automatic chuck to to grip it on this capstan here. And there's a a good cutaway line drawing of how it all works. Now, a lot of these drawings have got dimensions on them too. <coughs> There's lots of things that you see listed on eBay or you see at clearance sales that you really, I don't know what they are and a lot of them are in this book. Uh, things like these tool holders. I know that there's a, a box of these tool holders for sale on eBay at the moment and has been for about 12 months and I'm not sure if they'll ever sell. But um, they're not much good to anyone nowadays. This day of 3D printers and, and CNC machines, things like this inverted roller steady box tool, flange type, is not much use to anyone. There's lots about caps and uh, like tangential die holders and die heads and tapping heads and in the back here um, basically it's got tool layouts for different jobs so for example, you were making a, a ball bearing cage here, which is the second operation. You would rough face the end with this tool on this on this arbor, and then finish face end with a tool in the front tool post, which is this one. Then board diameters A and B and chamfer C with tools in boring bar and the hexagon turret. So this this job here with the three boring bars, this one chamfers it as you feed it in, and this one bores diameter one and diameter two. And this guide goes in the back of the chuck so that there's no movement. And four is for recessing diameters D and E. If we look at this drawing. How well you can see that. It's got a recess in the corner here from here. It looks like it's probably for a surf clip or something. You use a recessing cutter here. And then number five is the size bore diameter A. 
and number six is to tap bore B using a tap and die holder. So that's all the inside finished in what one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six passes. Chunk, 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 chunk. Job's done. There's quite a a lot of of die setups, um, things like pipe bends and a tap body and the setups for common things like that. There's a cartridge case on that side, a bell housing or motor casing, a cylinder liner, a rear hub for a car or a tractor or something. A front wheel hub for a tractor maybe, a cast hub. There's steel floor jings, cord or previously rough drilled through centre. Floor to floor, eight minutes to machine that. On a Herbert number 3A auto lathe. Is they were clever machines and they did, uh, sort of made motor cars and and household appliances within the reach of everybody because you didn't once they were set up once the, the tool maker and uh, set up the machine and got a, got everything right anybody could operate them so there's some more really nicely retouched pictures and there's one of them for each of the each of the, the examples shown in the last chapter is the ball bearing part with the number 2B capstan lathe all set up and they're all airbrushed they're really clever pictures and then there's dimensions in the back for tool holders and die holders and all those sort of things dimensions of the turret faces and where the where everything bolts on <clears throat> there's a there's a chart to angles of standard tools for knee tool angle for knee tools and combination tool holders. So basically how to how to sharpen the tools. And there's quite a lot here in the back on on tap drill sizes and helix angles for screw threads. And those sort of things. But it's a beautiful book and it's it's really a step back in time and the quality of it. It's it's good reading and it's well written. It must have cost someone so much money to to put it together though. This is um spring collets and uh, the square holders for uh, or liners for for the the um, interchangeable liner collet and someone's put a note here square liners is 50 shillings a set with inch and eight so up to inch and eight across flats which is quite big that's 28 millimeters Fifty shillings, which was a lot of money. I wonder if anyone ever bought. I wonder if the whoever wrote that note ever ever got a purchase order to make to to buy a set because they would have made the job a lot easier. I'm sure. But anyway, guys, this video has probably run long enough. I just thought you might like a look at this book and um, a little bit more of a look at at turret lathes and how they go together and uh, some examples of some airbrush art too that really impressed me so thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to to subscribe if you're, if you're interested in some more of this sort of stuff and yeah more to come i reckon thanks guys